Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Cryptoware. Today we are going to analyze yet another sample, but this time we are not, not going to perform a total analysis, analysis kind of sample, but we are going to discuss about a very important technique that majority of the malware use. And gradually we will move on to slightly advanced part of those things also. This is not a very basic part, but again, this is not a very advanced part also, since we have done some sort of debugging. So this will be kind of useful for us uh, for analyzing any malicious sample. So I'm using my virtual machine. Make sure that you're using a virtual machine or a sandbox environment and you have already taken a snapshot so that after your machine, virtual machine gets infected, you can get back to the uninfected state of your VM. Also make sure that you have uh, you have not shared you have not opened any shared drive with the host machine or anything like that. There should not be any network connection between the host and the uh, virtual machine because we do not want to infect our host machine at this point or at any point basically. So this is the hash that we are going to use and I'll be sharing the hash of the sample in the description below so you can go through it all by yourself. So first things first, we will check the sample in PE Studio. We will see what all details can we get from PE Studio. Here you can see that process hacker is already running and uh, we will be analyzing. So process hacker is required so that we can identify at which point our malware, which we are analyzing, gets um, uh, gets executed. Also other processes that we can see, we can get a lot of information. So it is pretty useful for us. So I always keep it open whenever I'm analyzing any malicious samples, especially when I'm doing some sort of dynamic analysis. So from PE Studio, what all information can we get is already we know the hash of the sample is this. We can see the size. We can see entropy, which means that it could be packed because it is more than seven. So there's a very nice chance that it is packed. It is it has used uh, C++ most probably. So we are not going to use DNSpy or ILSpy. So we'll be mostly using X32 DBG for debugging. Why X32? Because it is 32 bit. It is GUI and this is an executable. This is not a DLL. Any other information we can see from virus total, it already says that the score is 46. So it means that it is already a malicious sample. And some of them says that it is an injector. So most probably it is injecting something, some kind of script or maybe some other payload, which is an EXE. Also, it says somewhere it says that it is a stealer. Somewhere it says that this is a form book. Uh, one of them also says that this is a ransom. So we have to be pretty uh, careful that we do not end up encrypting our VM. But of course, we have taken a snapshot, so we don't have to worry about it. So these are the information. Also, it says auto IT. So we have gained pretty nice information, good sort of information. You can see some information from the resources part also directories and the sections libraries imports part have not come yet they're still getting analyzed so that is fine currently we do not need that much information for the work that we are trying to do um, next will be detected easy to identify if it is packed then which kind of packer is it using if is it a known packer or not so we'll quickly put our sample over here and it says the same thing like this is 32 bit GUI uh, linker is what it is using C or C++. So again, we'll, we are pretty confident over here that we have to use X32 DBG. Uh, it does not tell us anything about any packing technique or uh, any packer that has been used, but it does says that there's auto IT 3.XX. Uh, so we are not going to deal with the auto IT thing also right now. Uh, but later on, uh, we, we will be anyway dealing with what is auto IT, how do we analyze and currently we are not dealing with, right, uh, with it. So if you go to the entropy section, we will see that it says that the dot text section is packed. Also over here, it mentions that 89% is it is packed. So well, it is packed then 
uh, but since it has not mentioned which packer is being used so uh, we are guessing that it is not using any new packer or any known packer so most probably it could be a customized packer but we are not going to unpack or uh, do any kind of unpacking or find which what is getting injected right now we just want to understand the anti debugging part that we are going to discuss over here so as we have gathered a pretty nice uh, sort set of information so we'll open it with x32 dbg and you can keep your process hacker here ready to see what is happening so x32 dbg under x32 you can see that the hash is here and few things that we always prefer doing so i'll just so we'll just right click search for all user modules and string references why are we going through the string references to get an idea of what are the strings that are visible and whether we can identify anything from there anything that can make us understand or anything that is very suspicious that we need to put a breakpoint on apart from that strings can give you a lot of information like it already says that it is using auto it so i've increased the font uh what other information there is some could be gibberish some could uh, do not some are not gibberish some are just kind of rabbit hole so we just will quickly go through it there shell shell execute so if you want you can put a breakpoint over there also but right now we do not want to put any breakpoint there but this is pretty nice information that we can get so if this is not a rabbit hole we can guess that this is most probably a kind of a spyware or maybe some kind of information stealer i'm just guessing right now uh, based on the strings that i see because i i saw a lot of information which is related to finding uh, the device that is being used so it could be possible so you can see physical drive unknown ram disk so it is trying to gather a lot of information now it is not necessary that it is trying to steal this information maybe it requires this information to perform the next set of malicious action that it needs to so that could be another reason also here you can see dot lnk dot lnk is used so maybe after execution is it going to create a shortcut file dot lnk is a shortcut file in windows so could be so these are certain guesses that we are um, doing you can see h key h key users so maybe it is trying to make any changes to the registry keys so these things make us more suspicious about what action is it trying to uh, perform so okay we went through all the strings most probably then again we'll go to the symbols over here and we'll go to kernel 32 so as i mentioned that we are going to deal with the anti debugging technique and we are going to talk about a very simple anti debugging technique we do not have to talk about all the anti debugging techniques that exist and how it happens we'll gradually understand those things we are not going to you know run behind it too much but yes why am i starting with this thing because we have started with some sort of debugging a uh, thing previously in our previous videos <clears throat> so from here you can uh, put a breakpoint you can see what all calls that has been made the functions that have been used so i'll be looking for is debugger present and as you can see that a uh, breakpoint is already set over here you can right click on it and click on toggle breakpoint or you can directly click on f2 or function plus f2 to set a breakpoint over here also from here you can see where all i have already put some breakpoints like uh, the basic entry point the default entry point where the breakpoint is always set create process w mostly deals with creating a process so i have uh, set a breakpoint over there get logical drives i have just simply set a breakpoint over there because i was doing uh more than just the debugging thing i was trying to analyze the sample also q user apc it is also for different reason 
load resource it is specific to the resources that get loaded we will not get into that right now virtual alloc we have uh, we have already dealt with uh, virtual alloc previously so it is there for uh, allocating memory so if it is trying to unpack itself or maybe it is trying to inject something it will be using virtual alloc process 32 next is all related to also create tool help snapshot these are related to the processes that are currently running and all the processes that are running in your device right now resume thread is if any of your thread which has been sus uh, which is in suspended state you want to resume it and that is why it is used is debugger present is what we are going to deal with right now and write file x is for writing uh, some content to a file so i had put this breakpoints for some other reason but right now we are going to deal with is debugger present also side by side you you should make sure that you are keeping keeping an eye on the process hacker also so if anything gets executed you can always have a look over here if anything is happening that is going to help you a lot but right now we do not need it we may need it but right now we do not want to get into that so we'll click on continue i mean sorry run and here you can see address of the entry point so this is where the breakpoint default breakpoint was set and it has uh, it stopped over there we'll click again for continue to see the next breakpoint which is load resource let us not uh, get into it again and this is where we have to wait and understand what is happening and this is is debugger present before doing anything further over here let's understand what is debugger present is and it's very important that we always try to you know learn it from msdn we should know how to analyze these things or understand about a functions through their official pages So we'll quickly go here. So is debugger present? As you can see from the syntax, it is a Boolean function. So if it is a Boolean function, the result could be of two types, a true or a false, zero or a one. So one of the value would mean that yes, debugger is present over there. And the other value would mean no, the debugger is not present there. And that is what we are going to do. So if you see what the return value is, so just like virtual alloc, if you remember in virtual alloc also, we were dealing with what the return value is. So here also in is debugger present also, we are trying to understand what the return value is. So if the current process is running in the context of a debugger, the return value is non-zero. So if there is a debugger that is running, it will return a value which is non-zero but if debugger is not running it will return the value zero so that is the kind of manipulation that we need to perform now how we are going to do it in x32 so here you can see jump we are not going to go use step over because step over would be used to go to each function one by one but this time we want to get into the function so we'll be using step into so again in step into since we have stepped into the function of is debugger present we have to see the return value which is over here return value is mostly set in the eax register do let me know if you want to have a you know you want me to discuss about different registers stacks and everything i mean basic assembly then we can have a discussion on that also but for now, majority of the times, the return values are placed in EAX register. So we'll step into again. And you can see EIP, which is the next instruction that needs to be executed is this. I mean, 77671. 
we will again click on step into and we'll see that the next instruction that needs to be executed is the return value like basically it is going to return the value is in eax and if you remember if the if the current process is running in the context of a debugger the return value is non zero but if it is not running then the value is zero so we have to change it to zero but see if i don't change it to zero and i execute it like if i run it what happens is anything happening we can see in the process hacker maybe if anything got executed no nothing got executed over here still there and we do not see anything happening so it says run the debugger or start debugging so it has stopped so this has stopped over here so we will reload the uh, sample again but let's see if we change the value then what happens next so we'll perform the same things we are at the default entry point we are at the load resource you can remove the breakpoint you do not need to put breakpoint over there i put some extra breakpoints so that i do not end up executing the sample a lot of times now we have reached to the is debugger present call we'll step into it we'll again step into it till we reach till our eip reaches the return point and here's the eax so the value of eax is 1 which is non zero now to manipulate it and to make sure that no debugger is ru running currently we will have to double click on it and will change the value to zero and we'll click on okay and we will click on step over or step into whichever and i'll just click on run and we can see we are still able to execute the sample i mean debug the sample and it did not get stuck anywhere so we have uh, very successfully bypassed the anti debugging technique that has been used here now there are other techniques also there are other ways also how you can debug not only is the de is debugger present the only function call that is used but this is one of the function call that is used by majority of the samples so anyway so uh, when you execute or run this sample go through this sample you will find virtual alloc is being run also so that's it for today uh, thank you so much for watching the video please like share and subscribe to my channel cryptoware and i'll be coming with a next set of videos which is related to basic malware analysis slightly covering the advanced part as well so thank you so much.